Hi, everyone. Welcome to our retail solutions stage. Just a quick check. Can everyone hear me in the back? Yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. My name's Anna. I'm basically the conferencier for today. And um, I I'm very happy to introduce our first speaker. And I know that he's brought an extremely exciting project, or rather, actually, he's brought two very exciting projects, one of them which has been announced. And uh, he'll talk about another very exciting new case in a minute as well. So please welcome Frederick um, from Visual Art. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, as mentioned, uh, we'll focus on this case, and we also have another case coming up as well. Uh, basically uh, done with a lot of knowledge from the first one. The challenge came from H&M, uh, and we've done it as a partnership between Microsoft, Onbori, and Visual Art. And I give you a brief introduction to Onbori and Visual Art, because those companies you probably don't know that much. I guess most people know who, uh, who uh, Microsoft is. Uh, Visual Art is a Swedish-based company, uh, also operational in Germany. Uh, started in 97, original, original DNA is content, 2D, 3D, digital content. Went into digital signage uh, beginning of 2008. McDonald's, Ica, number one food retailer in Sweden. Today we're operating 24,000 screens, 15 countries. Uh, and uh, second area is digital out of home, where we're now the market leader in Sweden, rolling out in, in the Nordics. Uh, and the second company that came into this solution is a startup company. Onbori is a small company, uh, founded a couple of years ago in Sweden, and now working worldwide. Uh, and they're always trying, what they're trying to do is launch apps based on um, your mobile website. Within days, they can take their grid and create an app for you, instead of you doing it with your backend system for months. So these are the two companies that have been working on this case together with um, uh, Microsoft. And the challenge we were given from H&M, uh, how could you use screens, how can we do physical, mobile, uh, and add some new tech to it. And this is the basic the case. And we started looking into voice. I don't know how well spread voice is in Germany. It's starting to happen in Sweden but it's definitely happened in, uh, in the States. And vo voice, voice retail is happening. Amazon is doing it today. Uh, and it's probably the, the next screen. So that's one going in position for us. The second one is the QR code is actually back. It's actually started to work again. We killed the QR code, all of us, a couple of years ago when we uh, produced bad landing pages. You scan the QR code with a mobile, and the mobile landing page was not uh, done for mobile. Uh, so, but since uh, Apple has put it back into the camera, it's actually happening. And Android will do it quite soon. So these are two going in positions. If you look at voice as such, it's happening. The prediction now is that 50% of all the searches we do online will be voice in 2020. If you go to 2030, people actually believe we won't use this one anymore. Let's see if that's true in 2030. Uh, the company that's driving this change is Amazon and Google when it comes to the customer facing area. Uh, and why is it working? I mean, there's a couple of simple facts. Uh, we can type 40 words a minute, but we can speak at 150 of them. So there is much easier to talk to a device than to actually tap a screen. It's happening in cars already. We're not supposed to tap a screen in cars, right? So it's much easier to talk to the car, ask for directions. You can actually talk in your uh, text messages today, if you have the Apple uh, solution. And uh, you see more and more in the household that you, it's, you take away pain points, you take away friction if you can talk to devices. I have the Google Home in my house at home, and when the milk is out, I just say, okay, Google, let, uh, let add milk to the shopping list. I don't need to clean my hands if I'm cooking, I can just talk to it. If I need to put something into the oven for 10 minutes, I say, okay, Google, let's put timer on 10 minutes. Makes life so much easier. So that's one reason, uh, that's the, the reasoning. And it, I don't know if you've seen the landscape, but Home Assistant is basically owned by Amazon and Google now, uh, where it's happening. Vehicles, Apple is very close to it. Uh, Microsoft, Apple, when it comes to desktop, mobile, so it's happening, smart homes. You talk to the light setting, you don't, uh, pick up an app anymore. You can talk to it, evening light, morning light. 
so on and so forth. And if you look at the, uh, what the way it look, looks in the States right now, in 2016, seven to eight percent of American households had their own voice device, completely owned by Amazon. It's changing, as you can see, six months later, Google Home is coming in. They're doing it with Walmart to compete uh, with Amazon. Uh, another reason for voice. And finally, uh, what do you do with your voice device today? The voice device isn't that smart yet. It's getting smarter. Uh, but most people listen to music. They ask for info. Uh, and they add things to the shopping list. That's my example. But as you can see, people also start ordering food. You order food by voice. Keep it simple. So, we believed we could use voice, we could use voice to create something for H&M. So coming back to the, uh, uh, the question in the, at task, we needed to revitalize our flagship store. So now you're gonna, get, you're gonna see a three minute case movie. This is what we did in the flagship store in New York. Hello, I'm the H&M Voice Interactive Mirror. You can find me in the biggest H&M store in the world, on the second floor at Times Square, where I live and breathe fashion. Hello from New York. I am at H&M Times Square store, and I'm here today to introduce you the voice interactive mirror, unique in the world. Follow me. Get closer, get closer. Get closer. Hello, I'm a voice assistant. What would you like to do? Take a selfie or get fashion inspirations? Selfie. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one, look up at the camera. <laughs> Which one do you like? Oh, that's cool. And now we are going to test the voice interactive mirror. Hello, I'm a voice assistant. What would you like to do? Take a selfie or get fashion inspirations? Take a selfie. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Three, two, one, look up at the camera. Which cover do you prefer? Fashion. I'm uploading it for you now. Great cover. Use a QR code scanner to download it. If you have an iPhone, open your camera to scan the code. I got the link. The picture is gonna upload here. There you go. I have the cover in high resolution. If I scroll down, I will see the suggested hashtag. And if I subscribe to the fashion newsletter, I will get 20% discount in my next purchase. Let's take a look at some fashion inspirations. What would you like to do? Take a selfie or get fashion inspirations? Fashion inspirations. Would you like to see women's or men's fashion? Men fashion. Great. What men's style would you prefer? Modern classics. Here's a modern classics look we think you'll like. Use a QR code scanner to shop the look or get 20% off. If you have an iPhone, open your camera to scan the code. Now I'm gonna scan the QR code to get uh, the fashion look recommendation. Here we go. This is a suggestion. I get 20% discount off if I subscribe to the fashion newsletter. And of course, I can go directly and get this look in our e-commerce, add to bag, and there we go. It was so much fun. And now it's your turn. Three, two, one, look up at the camera. Great cover. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thanks for creating me. See you soon. 
as you can see, <clears throat> we, we were able uh, to find a completely new screen. We were able to do something in voice. And uh, one learning we had quite early is that uh, nothing happens in the, with a screen that meets you in a vertical position. Because people don't understand you can actually talk to them. So that's why we have the face recognition. When you get close to it, it starts talking to you. And that's where we're starting getting conversion. And if you're looking at, uh, just to look at some uh, business values here. Uh, if you look at the left hand side where they're doing the selfie thing. 86% of the persons going up to it are actually downloading the, the picture. That means they're saving it or sharing it to social media. So they're hanging out with H&M brand. Uh, secondly, 10% of the customers actually pick up the 20% coupon and enter their email address into the system. So they're quite evident business values. Just being a cool thing, yes, but also business values. On the other side, when you choose to go for a um, uh, different type of clothing, we're just picking up what's on the top line of the website. If we could identify the customer, we could actually personalize. So with an identified customer, we can do a much, much better case. So basically, we can say that I believe that we actually delivered what I asked for, some innovation. Uh, I'll show you some more numbers, but I think we're up to 400,000 views now if you com combine all the views we have on YouTube and other channels. Uh, and then the next step would, of course, be to have the H&M voice, not our voice. If H&M uh, would have their own voice, their branded voice, that would be a completely different thing. When you ho have your home assistants, as I have at home, you talk to, OK, Google, uh, can you help me with this and this and that? And because it's voice, so somewhere down the line, when Google is helping me, I say, oh, thanks, Google. And I'm talking to a machine, right? So I strongly believe voice and the voice of the brand is a very close connection to the brand. I like Google much more now with my Google Home Assistant than I ever done before. Uh, so this is the H&M case. Uh, and if you're thinking, if you try the Siri on your, app, your iPhone, you know it's not working that much. That's good uh, as of now. It's working, but not as bad. And not as good as it's supposed to do. Uh, you should know that what the Google AI is doing today, so far it's read 3,000 Roman novels just to understand how we speak to each other. So the voice function, the voice artificial intelligence is coming. And we will soon speak to that machine as we speak to whomever. Second task. Uh, we were asked to uh, look at Wired, their new store opening in the central part of Stockholm. They didn't want to do another store. They did like to do something else, right? So basically, we knew that with the H&M findings, we need a wake up in some sort. If you want to talk to someone with a screen that is on the wall, it has to wake. A screen that is tilted, people understand they can touch. Uh, we know that the QR code actually started working. <coughs> so we had some usable findings. Now we're getting more and more into the actual, I mean, the, the big game right now is to merge physical stores with online shopping. And what we're trying to do here is create new customer journeys. Uh, and also do some shareable moments because that people like to share in social media and so on, so forth. So this will be the second case.
if you look into this case, <coughs> this case, uh, the screen on the right uh, just didn't happen. When we started off, it just didn't happen. When we added the QR touch board two weeks later, all of it started working. So there is so much new technology. There is so much new talking to a screen or connecting to the screen, taking over the screen, working with the screen, and <coughs> then take it to e-com or whatever. So <coughs> we needed to have the touch board in store to people to understand that this is store is something else than what you're used to. And we got that one right, this one started working. Uh, so the touch board uh, was an evident driver for the second screen, which was installed first. And uh, what we can see is that people who actually start using it get a high en engagement. They try it out, they look at products, and they actually use it. Uh, but still, wake up has to be on the screen. If it's on the wall, nobody understands, it can talk to you, or you can work with it in any case. And uh, when it comes to uh, where we're able to achieve evident customer engagement when they started using, using it. Uh, and in this case, we we'll launched the beginning of June. We need more data, as we have in the H&M case. So there's more, uh, more evaluations, uh, evaluations to come. Uh, but this, I mean, this is still evident. People like to share. They like to share whatever they do or what the product they're looking after. So I strongly believe that this, uh, this will be a positive way. And we're trying to get online, offline behavior. The way you flip the phone with the accelerator is the way you flip on a uh, phone. It's, or you touch the screen or you flip the phone. So trying to get the same behavior into the store as you do online. So. In summary, we were given these two tasks, and what we can say today is that I think we delivered some sort of change. Uh, we got H&M, what they asked for, something different. What's very important here is we did it with partners. We did it with a company that specializes in apps, understand mobile websites, visual art coming from digital communication, digital screens, digital signage, and powered by Microsoft. And that's the reason we were able to launch this within a couple of months. It cannot be done by each company doing their own thing. And I think that's the future. You get, you get to get companies working together in whatever way they're good to meet, to meet the customer and uh, what they're asking for. And when it comes to the actual data, we have roughly three, 400,000 views, but the H&M um, PR team is saying that we have 73 million the reach of the film is as such. So that's a huge impact for them. Uh, and we have a number of articles written in this industry. So uh, that, that worked. The other one probably comes a little bit later, we hope. And trying to summarize what it's all about anyhow, we are asked to do something for H&M for, uh, in New York because they have an issue with the runway. We're asked to do something with the wired store because they want to make it more engaging, something new. The bottom line for us is to understand offline, online, the customer journeys, and in fashion is very evident. In fashion, you, you actually screen things online and you go to the store to check it out and you might even go on a price uh, comparison, comparison, comparison site and buy it somewhere else, right? So that customer journey is very evident in fashion. It's not that evident in food. It's not that evident in other industries, as it is pharmacies, for example. No, why should it? It might come, uh, but fashion is very evident. Uh, and how can you use new tech and make sure it's customer-centric approach? You can use it. It's fun for the customer. And you need a UX that actually works. We found it. Wake up, talk to the customer, use voice. Uh, and by the end of the day, it's getting this new customer journeys between physical and digital touch points. What we all usually call omni-commerce or omni-channel or unified commerce. Uh, that's, that's the big goal for us when we're doing these things. And we do them, we do a proof of concept. If they're usable, we'll we make them operational, which these ones are now. And you can actually scale them if you like to. That's the H&M case and the Wired case also. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Frederick. Um, 
What I really love about the idea of a voice-activated mirror is that basically we've all been trained mirror, mirror on the wall. It's basically, I've looked at so many virtual mirror approaches over the last couple of years, and most of them just didn't work for me. I was always like, yeah, okay, so I'm standing in front of this mirror, and blah, blah, blah. it's just a big touch screen, basically. And I think what you did with integrating voice into that is that you really went back to that kind of fairy tale approach that people know. It's something completely natural for people. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. What I really liked about your story about the YRED case was that you, you said that at first with just the call to action it didn't work and then you integrated the QR code and suddenly it did. So basically it's an iterative approach working with partners and integrating multiple um, players into that. How was your experience taking those two approaches that tend to actually come from a very digital mindset, basically not having to do everything yourself and actually working with iterations. How did you find working with those partners? Because Microsoft is a big one. So going through iterations of a product, did you find that that was working quite well or did you find that challenging? Actually, I mean, uh, Visual Art is a company with uh, roughly 40 million euros turnover, 100 employees, but we're still quite innovative. Mm -hmm. And that's more or less the DNA from uh, Visual Art. Uh, Onboard is a startup company. Mm -hmm. So working, when we're working together, we have no issues. Mm -hmm. And also being powered by Microsoft mm -hmm. uh, helps us doing the solution. So it's been quite, quite simply to do these iterations. Fantastic. Yeah, and we have had fun also together with the customer. So yeah, that works. And I mean, that's the way of, that's the way of today. You need to do things you believe is right. You try them out, spend as less money as possible learn something and then kill them or make them excel. I think that's something that I see a lot of fashion brands struggling with because they don't they feel quite insecure about this whole digital approach of trying something and then doing kind of changing it and trying to get it again and all that. So I think that is super exciting to see how it worked out for you and so thank you very much for sharing your Thank you.